Okay. We'll call the meeting to order okay. at 6.02. Uh, the, the meeting is being taped as usual by FCAT and it will be available shortly up on the FCAT station. If you go to YouTube, uh, folks at home can watch it by searching for FCAT Media and then you will find all of our Conway Select Board meetings. And also Sunderland meetings and Deerfield meetings, and more meetings than you want. Uh, so John is not here today, so I'm stepping in, big shoes to fill. Uh, we'll be, we'll be uh, performing the meeting. So. so we'll start with the minutes. Uh, we have two sets of minutes today. The first one is for our previous meeting on October 1st. Uh, and we read the minutes. Any problems with the minutes? No. Nope. Nope. So uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes. Do I have a second? Yes. And we're all in favor? Yeah, I, me too. And we have another set of minutes from a tax classification meeting that we held um, partway through the week. Uh, the tax classification meeting is where we decide whether Conway is going to institute uh, a higher tax level on the businesses in town and we certainly don't want to make the businesses in town mad at us and we decided not to uh, to charge a higher tax to get we want to give all the businesses and everyone in town the same uh, tax percent and uh, and then we actually had uh, got some new numbers from the state and so we had another tax classification meeting but we don't have those minutes quite yet so for the October 4th meeting, did everybody read the minutes? Yes, that's accurate. And so, yes. We'll approve the minutes? Yes. Aye. Me too. I heard a second there. And yes. There's a yes. motion from Bob but, and a second from yeah. Tom. That's yeah. good. Okay. So we have warrants that we all had to sign today. So we have four warrants today. We have a vendor warrant for 153850 a payroll warrant for 116900 a payroll deduction warrant for 28695 and a school activities warrant. We often don't have that one. A school activities warrant for 4375 That's a quarterly warrant. A quarterly? Okay, yeah. And uh, so if we look over the warrants, we signed them. Oh, they approved? Yes. Make so motion. motion to approve the warrants? The second? Yes, don't we? You know, yes, if that's, if that's adequate, if that's an adequate enough mo uh, motion. Then <laughs> yeah, he made a motion. I'll make the motion? Yes. And you second it? Yes. They'll all say aye. Okay. So, meetings attended by select board members. So, um, how about meetings, Phil? Yeah, the, uh, the Conway School Committee, Frontier School Committee. Um, that's about it. That was enough. And we also went to another one of our school budget meetings where we went, we went back over the final details of uh, the Frontier School uh, capital budget. Right. And we were pretty ready to approve that. And it's going to be presented next week. I think it's November committee. Yeah, November thirteenth oh, is the next month. Yeah, November thirteenth is the public unveil, and we are trying to get finance committees and uh, Dana from Long Range Capital Planning as well to go there. I think so the more the merrier. Been a long haul. Uh, I only went to one other meeting, and I'll call it a meeting, but it might not be a meeting. I just really it was. I went over to the Conway Flu Clinic last weekend and I gave flu shots on Saturday over at the town office. And uh, it was very well done. Uh, it's great to see all of the school nurses from all the districts and the school nurses over the years that I remember from when my kids were there and they all still come and jab everybody with flu vaccine. They do a very nice job. Uh, okay. It's one of those vestiges though that if there was one thing we could change about the laws, it would be the requirement for every small elementary school to have a full-time nurse. Is um, there a requirement? Or yeah, and, and share? Oh. no, and it and it go, and it come. It's from the 1880s. It's still one of the original school laws. It's been. It was because children were still starving to death for malnutrition then. <laughs> um, not I mean they are now too, but not in our school district. Um, but it'd be it'd be really nice if we could combine 
nurses with other schools. Yeah. We're statutorily unable to. Well, I enjoy seeing them, and I remember. But I love Meg. Sorry, Meg, if you're watching. You're awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Public comments. I don't see anyone here to give us any public comments, so we'll skip that. Um, so we have two forms of old business today. So one was last week, or two weeks ago, we talked about appointing a representative to the Frontier Regional Negotiation. And I can't remember exactly how we left that. I know that, that Tom was going to give us, so do you want to address that? You were going to give us the, the actual rules? Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the select board, uh, the select board chairs or their designees uh, from each of the towns are required to meet to select from among themselves uh, a single representative for negotiations. Uh, the meeting for Frontier is set for November 13th. Um, I have not heard from John whether or not he wants to be uh, at that meeting or have a designee, um, but there's another similar item coming up under items not anticipated 48 hours below the meeting that we'll have to go into this further on. Uh, but right now we don't have, oh right, we already said Phil would be our, right. I'm sorry, we already said Phil would be our uh, designee. So you think, go to the meeting on November 13th and be part of that group to select a representative. Right, and I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll all be there. I think I was hopeful that John was going to be there for that too. I don't know if he was able to, but just because I thought he'd be useful, he'd be useful in that sort of a thing to for the rollout and to see if he can, uh, you know, what he thinks of it. And, are we all allowed to go? Yeah. The, uh, the, yes, you're not all. The, the rules seem to apply each time. You don't all get a one vote. Person. <laughs> I see. Uh -huh. um, it's uh -huh. a public meeting, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, well, well actually, actually, come to think of it, it's not a meeting of a public body. Yeah, the way that that read, uh, the, uh, yeah. Um, the the if you're only allowed one. Uh, and Deerfield makes up 49% of the weighted average. Um, Deerfield usually gets their way in something like that, is my experience. But but last, last time you expected that there may be no one else that will yeah, really it, do it. it the, the law doesn't, as you saw, right. doesn't talk about a weighted average. Right, right. So, so, so. we'll see. I mean, I, uh, I, the, the reason I wanted to do it is because I had a clear focus and right. uh, and, and, and I think a, a chance to accomplish something systemically uh, good, useful. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's set for November thirteenth, and you'll be there. Yeah. And uh, you know, I can try to clarify uh, if it's an if it's an open meeting or not. It it is quite clearly not a meeting of a public body. So presumably, it does not have to um, be noticed and, and minuted and all that sort of thing. The way of the open meeting law would be. So, so most of these rules seem to deal with how you vote and how they, you know, how this group votes. Um, not and a little bit of on, on the selecting, but right. Uh, so there's nothing that we have to decide on for that. We've we've we voted on you two weeks ago. So yeah. Okay, I think we're good. So you are you are the designee okay. to attend the meeting. Okay. To vote on a rep. Okay. And then one of the one of the designees or chairs there. And so so the other thing we have to vote on is we have to accept the uh, direct local technical assistance grant. Uh. Well, no. Um, this is a meeting on October twenty second okay. where the FERCOG will explain uh, what they have to offer. Okay. And maybe they have policies. Uh, I, they mentioned policies, which are something that maybe the town and the Board of Health uh, would be involved in as opposed to the schools. Um, but it would probably be good to hear their presentation um, and then, you know, we can assess whether or not there's anything. Um, so is that part of the joint meeting with the Board of Health? Well, it was going to be, except the Board Almost of Health, uh, yeah. as I noted in my email, sending the agenda out when I had uh, confirmed that, the Board of Health 
doesn't see a role for themselves, which I think is, you know, if I were um, the Board of Health, I would also say, well, why not hear what they have to say anyway? Um, that is a Board of Health meeting night. Um, so if we meet, if, we, if we're in, at FERCOG at 6 o'clock, we'll have a tough time getting back here. No, no, they'll, they'll come here. Oh, they'll, oh, FERCOG will be here? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, and they'll just say what they have to offer, and we can either say it's redundant or not. I know there was a concern that it was redundant last time, but there may be town-wide policies or, or policies for the Board of Health, which we can then communicate to them that said it would help if you would pass this sort of thing. Um, I, I don't know what they what their presentation is. So we'll hold that meeting here and then the Board of Health will will they hold their meeting over at town hall or town office? They're they're not interested in meeting with the fur card. But they would meet with us at seven. No. The meeting is solely for the fur card presentation. This is an off week for the select board. Right. So it's just to come in to hear what they have to say. Okay. They should have to supply food or dinner or something. Then. <laughs> okay. At six o'clock. Yes. Okay. Hearing no objections. So new business. Uh, so we have some appointments. Uh, two appointments. We have to redo them because we think they might have been a slight error in their appointment. Yeah, in that they may not have actually gotten on the list. Um, that's from Lisa. Uh huh. So she tracks that sort of thing and says, "Oops, we need to get Bruton and so Bruton Strange uh, and Peter Zale and with Peter the Conservation Zale. Commission." Yes, yeah. and Bruton will be in in a few minutes. Okay. So I make a motion that we well, should, why don't we wait until he comes and we can do it then. No, no, we, we can do this now. He's coming in for something else. Oh, okay. Well, so I'll make a motion that we Always appoint. Always better to, to appoint someone that's not here. Not here. Well, he can't object. <laughs> he won't object. Oh, I think they're fine with being here. So Bruton yeah. Strange and Peter Zale to the Conservation Commission. Do for terms have? ending June 30th, 2021. As you say. Lock yeah. them up for maximum length. That's what I say. Yeah. Do we have a second? <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a second. Yeah, yes, a second? Yes. Okay, and all in favor will say aye. Uh, they are in. Uh, okay, letters. So we have a letter uh, to the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. So that was a, a letter that, you, that we have here? Yes, and these came from the Rural Commonwealth uh, they've been going around for some time uh, looking at issues that, that rural towns might take on strategically that we might actually get some traction on. Uh, this one um, has to do with, uh, with land acquisition and getting... Uh, so I, I read that. I didn't get the, this letter at all. So you want them to switch from a double bulletin to a single point because the blurb that they send out under each town is just too complicated for people to read? So we want a single point bulletin and we're going to send this letter to annoy you to get a single point bulletin? Well, I don't know how, it's, how they do the notification now. It sounded like they do just a, a, a large multi-town blast of all of the land they plan on buying. Have, have we ever had a situation where the state was acquiring land in our town and we didn't know about it? <clears throat> For Conway, I don't, I don't know. know that we would know. <laughs> if, right. If we, uh, if we didn't know. Because um, I don't care how they notify us. I just want them to pay more. I don't want to annoy them before I even get the words out of my mouth, pay more. So, so this is a letter from Rural Commonwealth who's looking out for the interests of many towns here in Western Mass. Yeah, they're, they're and, saying that some towns have not been notified. And, and this is just writing to request them to pay attention to the reg that is supposed to cover this. Some towns barely have a mailing address. No. <laughs> well, they're not doing it now, apparently. So this is uh, something asking them to do it. 
So, you know, maybe it would have been nice if we had rural Commonwealth come here and present this to us, but instead they're, they, they've it looked sent us a it letter. It looked picky in and just sort of non-essential to me. So rural Commonwealth meets with many towns and they accumulate uh, complaints that the towns have about their dealings with the state. Some of them have to do with laws, some of them have to do with, you know, the, the way the state chooses to function. And this may be low-hanging fruit. So, so it, it, it may be a relatively small thing, but if the state doesn't, tell, doesn't notify the town when it takes a piece of land and then all of a sudden it's not on the tax rolls and it should be, then that throws uh, the whole uh, taxation process off as we've had all kinds of issues with our taxation process this year. So uh, probably good get, to get definite notification that they're doing it. And they, I mean, and they're really asking for two things. One of the things is the way it gets, the notification occurs, and the other is that the state holds a hearing, and you know, for the public to come and talk about whether they have objections to their land being sold to the state or taken. It, it would be or taken by right. eminent domain. Yeah. In effect, that's right. So the, the, they make the deal with the landowner but don't notify the town, and so it gets off the tax rolls, and the town doesn't know it's off the tax rolls, so the assessors have to go back and change all their figures, and that's a, that's a pain. So can you live with that? Yeah, I, I, I that, yeah, yeah. The only thing more picky than talking about the picky nature of that letter is the picky nature of this conversation that drags on forever. <laughs> no, 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 it's all important. <laughs> Uh, and, and there's going to be a second rural Commonwealth yeah. letter coming up momentarily. So yeah, I, you know, that one I, made more sense. I, to I don't me. want to slander rural no, Commonwealth. There, that one made more sense to me. The second one made more sense. Trying to look out for the best wishes of a lot of small towns. That's one way to look at it. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. <laughs> okay, so so uh, I'm going to make a motion that we're going to approve and sign this letter, which is actually which all three of us get to sign this letter. Yes. So so uh, I'll make a motion that we sign this letter. I'll second that. Okay, and I'll say aye. Yes. And we have a second letter from Rural Commonwealth. That's that one. So I, I, I know less about this one, the one that we're sending to Matt B. Do you, do you know this one, Tom? Yeah, this is um, that, you know, we, we have all sorts of issues about the state owning land, um, mainly that it, it does not make reasonable payments in lieu of taxes, uh, but also that it doesn't necessarily tell us how it's calculating what it does pay us. Um, and uh, this is asking them not only to notify the town, but to uh, to actually come out and hold some kind of a hearing in the area where it's happening so that people get to uh, ask for more money, I guess. <laughs> so that they get to find out exactly how the calculation's being made and uh, ask any other questions about the payment in lieu of taxes process. So it's asking for notification and a hearing. It's a companion piece to the first. It is. The complaint that I remember hearing from rural Commonwealth or that a lot of towns had was that the amount of payment lieu of taxes you receive from the state depends upon the state body that buys your land. So some state bodies pay a lot more in taxes or in lieu of taxes than others. And you have no control over which state body is actually buying your land. They would like to see more consistency, and I don't think that's what that, this letter is for, but there are a lot of complaints like that about the way that what happens when the state basically acquires your land by eminent domain. So, you approve this one? Make a, I'll make a motion yeah. that we will sign this letter. 
Second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. So Tom, do you want to talk about the highway garage? Uh, yeah, we name we, we'd gotten some some uh, suggestions that it would be better to call it uh, a facility or a complex or something like that, just so that people would would understand that it's it's not a single that the proposal last time at least wasn't for a single building, and um, it and I look back and actually it had been recommended last time to call it a facility, which would be sort of the generic common term for something that was um, multifaceted. So um, just a, a name change for the committee so that it can, it can better reflect uh, at least what happened last time and what may very well happen this time as so well. So we're looking to rename the Highway Garage Committee the Highway, highway Faci Facility, facility committee. committee. Right. I'm sure that will make it much more acceptable to everyone. So um, <laughs> to some, <laughs> well, it, it, it's addressing a concern that was heard. Okay. So we, everybody then wants to address concerns that are heard. The committee supports this. So. Um, the I'm not, at at that, the same town meeting, yeah, the yeah, marijuana bylaw passed unanimously, so they ought to combine the two, highway facility and free pot committee or something <laughs> like that. Then, then they'll get then they'll get stuff passed. I don't yeah. know where free pot came from. Oh, the from. planning board you know, has, has been very, very good recently. Yeah. Yes. So I'll make that motion that we will rename the Highway Garage Committee to the Highway Facility Committee. Yes, wonderfully, wonderful. Second. That's second, okay, so we'll all say aye. Aye. We'll, we'll do that one. And the, we have to sign the contract with the Cultural Council. They want to give us some $4,500. Yeah. That's the annual letter that comes out for uh, Cultural Council money for receiving it. Uh, it should actually be John that signs that particular yeah. one. So if you can just vote to approve it, approve it's being signed, he'll come in and I'll move to approve this. Yeah. I will second that one. There you go. So, so I, I, I love the things these guys do. Why do we only get 4,500? I'm not the one to ask. Why well, do we only get 4,500? Because of our population. It's a very... Yeah, because people aren't spending enough money on the, on the lottery, I guess. Uh -huh. Though, I think, uh, yeah, the arts, the arts lottery um, now has, uh, has less money going to the arts than it, than it did originally. I, I don't think it's 100% anymore. Yeah. No, it's great. So it's, it's the one thing that individuals can go after. It's moved and seconded, but we have to vote, so I'll say aye. Aye. And so we've approved it, and we'll leave it with you, Tom, for John yeah. to sign. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's great. Thank you. So I just, to, to the highway facility, are we going to have sort of a lessons learned conversation at some point about what went down at the town meeting and how we can sort of improve? prospects for the future that's going to be the work of the committee until until town meeting um the next meeting by the way is november 6th if that's a tuesday it is it a is it's, 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 it's election, election day. day and at six o'clock the um, people will be gathering at the town garage the public is invited it's on the website um and then coming back here for six thirty to go over um, the process last time, sort of how we got to where we are. Uh, we did some looking at the plans last time. I think we'll probably look at the plans again. So getting everybody sort of up to speed on where we are, how we got to where we are now. Uh, we will be looking at, at um, articulating the need for a garage, uh, the functionality uh, that's desired uh, uh, excuse me, facility. The need for a facility. Yes. The functionality that is desired from that facility, um, how that relates to the design, 
all of those questions uh, as well. And, and I hope to come up with a written statement, report, nothing too involved, but something you know that explains the, the situation to be distributed well in advance of the next annual town meeting. And that would be a product of this committee. Did you see the recorder article about Buckland's on Saturday? They're getting their garage, or they're no. voting for it. They're voting for it, they but they did exactly yeah. what we were told, what I was told we, is illegal to do, which is uh, have town meeting vote on the project before the project is funded. And they put it out to bid before there was design work and before there was a project manager hired. And they're bringing the bids back to town meeting with that, that are two point something million and then with a proviso that doesn't include design work, it doesn't include all the other stuff. Um, and town meeting is going to fund it on those basis. And those are, that's exactly what I was asking. Mm -hmm. And you had said you can't do it that way, can't do it that way. John said can't do it that way. Well, I will, and, I will look into that. And, and you think that would improve I, its chance of that? Passing? That would have dramatically improved the chances of it p passing, in my opinion. Because that's actually asking for the town's consent before you spend the money on the thing, and that's what it's supposed to be. So that's what I said. That's what I still say. And then you build whatever well, you we, do. Of course, for we that. asked the town's consent <laughs> at twice during the process. Yeah. You know? but and and um, yeah. Well, I will look into what they did. I mean, so then the town is voting on it without people knowing what it is they're buying. So that's backing up uh, sort of to the renaming of the thing, but that's yeah. We'll, we'll just, yeah. I'll, I'll just okay. We'll deal with that offline then. So, so Tom, how is this getting uh, publicized? Or you know, is there it's, it's on the website. I, you know, yes. Uh, 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 there were a lot of people that ho hopefully will come to wait, this wait, committee. Wait. Uh, yeah, this is okay. I, I'm not sure why. I know it's not on the agenda, but it's important. Now. But yeah. Please come to the committee meeting. It's, Please, I mean, yes, we the, have. We, this is this is why we're doing this live. Or we're doing the, this uh, on air. Is so. the point here? Yeah. Election day, six o'clock at the garage. Slash fire station. Slash ambulance. Ambulance. Facility. Facility. Yes. yes. Facility. Yes. Yes. Okay. Community sentence construction. <laughs> so our items not anticipated, and the first one is Bruton. Hey. You can stay there, join here, whatever. Hi guys. So we're continuing the conversation we had a yes month ago. This is not whatever. developed uh, in a good way in that uh, we've lost another member of the committee, which effectively, come November, brings us down to two, which is not enough for a quorum, which puts our permitting ability on uh, stop the dead in its tracks. So who else left? So Peter Zale is leaving. He is. He is. And Marcel tried to leave years ago and is technically not on anymore. So it's down to me and Bob uh, come November, which is uh, winter slow. So that's good. We usually go down to one meeting a month. But um, I think it falls on one of you guys to uh, step up until we can get it properly staffed. Um, we'll need a resignation from Peter. So... Okay. And that needs to go to the town clerk. I can write him if you want. Uh, you want to write him? Get in touch with Peter. Yeah, that'd be great. And I don't know officially what Marcel did. Um, we actually just reappointed him. So. <laughs> did we? Oh, I saw that in the agenda. Yeah, um, that's right. We did. Yeah, but he has to. Uh, he has to bow out. So he's planning to resign. We will wait. Yes, he gave his yeah. notice at the last meeting. He is going okay. to show up for the next meeting for which there is a vote that needs to happen. Um, okay, after that, he should send something signed to Jenny. Okay. Then then he will be officially Did, did you volunteer to tell him that? Yeah. Okay, All right. So I'm, uh, as far as that goes, it's on record. And uh, so there we are. Um, what, would, what it required is basically a warm body to listen attentively and to vote. That's all I really need to get us through. Like I said, it's really slow in the winter. Uh, I will take care of the accounting and the head duties for the time being and setting up all that stuff. Yeah. But so there we are. It's, it's really not a big, so like I said, it's about an hour. Um, 
worst case scenario, it's twice a month. Um, I don't know if it's ever gone beyond an hour and a half. But like I said, I just need someone who's interested and uh, not even interested, attentive. What days are the meetings? Um, it's Tuesdays. So it's the second and fourth Tuesdays of every month. It's school for me. So, so it's actually a super great. Unless you really want to do it, Phil, I'm willing to do it. Um, you, you know, my my view is that Phil does, is our school committee rep already on top of the select board. So that's uh, great. And it, Bob, uh, it's it's actually a really cool committee. Um, I don't have to sell it, but I could. Um, so yeah, something's got to happen. So I, don't know. I mean, you know, I, most of those second and fourth are school committee, but not all. They move around a little bit, so, uh, but. I mean, you can put me down too, and you can be the first alternate, and I can be the, your emergency substitute. Can we do it that way? No, we, we should have pointed. I think somebody so no, says, I'm, I'm, right. I'm really willing to do it. All right, okay. good. Um, you good. Might, uh, a lot of people really like it. It's actually a very cool committee, and we see uh, all parts of town and meet everybody. Um, and we get to do a little something for Mother Nature. Too. I only see it for when they come to my house to do something at my house. Yeah. Right? And um, that's always appreciated too. So. Yeah, it really is, It's especially in the winter, because there's not a lot of building. Um, yeah. Uh, so that would be great. So I need someone to come to show up uh, on this. So when's the first one? Would be second six Tuesday of November. Which should be the thirteenth. Oh, we, have we had the fourth? Well, the no, next one is the twenty. Is next? Yeah, is it's next, next week. Tuesday. Would okay. be great if you want to show up. That would be great. And then um, the next one after that would be the six or the thirteenth of November. So the twenty third. Yes, sir. So I'll have to miss your historical, t your pitch. Yes, as with uh, Bob Novak, because he's got this thing too. But we're actually voting on the, um, well, you won't be voting. Uh, we're doing the UCC church demolition and rebuild. Oh, okay. So it's that kind of stuff that has to keep moving. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's, you know, there's always more stuff coming. So a motion to appoint. So we'll make a motion to appoint me as the... Would I call that the interim, or just a new member of the conservation committee? Why don't we go with new uh, member? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. For the foreseeable future. Yeah, and like uh, I said, it's pretty low. Yeah. Uh oh, it's okay. Okay. So I'll make that motion. I'll second, second. it. You can, can I? May I? No. No. <laughs> okay. I'll second it. No. <laughs> and, and, uh, and and keep the ball rolling. Am I allowed to vote aye? Yes. I mean, yes. You know, since it's yes, of my, anyway, so we'll vote oh, aye. Yes. Yes. There it is. So. Cool. So, the, I, I was really expecting that, that you would have a hard time finding somebody to step in. That you'd be back, and we would be doing this. So, well, if I, so I did think about this. But, good. I'm glad. It's yeah. actually pretty fun. And um. And with Peter dropping out, it's a it has to happen. So yeah, it would actually yeah. be nice to have another person because that really just brings us up to the quorum. Um, so that's just three out of the five needed. I saw you clearly submitted something in the visitor. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, and and right something there. will be going out with the tax bills later this week too, which is awesome. And, and we still need someone, so yeah. we still need two. In addition to you. Oh, is that right? Okay. So we actually need three people right now, and uh, you know, it'd be nice to have a. A fourth, but I'm asking around if you know is, anybody. Is it, people. Does it have to be five people? I mean, is there, is there are there towns that have three? And yeah, but we're currently set up with five, with three as a quorum. That's our very specifically right. set up. So and we just ch actually tried to change it and that didn't happen. So we're currently that's right. our thing. But we definitely need three people. And you're the chair. I am the acting chair. <laughs> uh, happily, to, happy to take someone else and let someone else take that mantle. There aren't many people who could step in now. So. You know, I mean, I'm not just not selling again. But Jack actually came in knowing nothing and did a fantastic job. Oh, being I'm the chair. sure that's true. But he's a very bright and kid man. Yeah. Um, but it's about it's about a desire as much as anything, an interest, uh, and you know, patience with regulations. So if you guys know anybody, if you guys know anybody in Conway, please uh, give us a call because I really do need to fill it. It's kind of a mm. thing. Yeah. Do you want to do a pitch for? Do you get a jacket? Do you get any emblems? Do you got any, get any like? <laughs> you know, I will get personally uh, get bags. I will personally craft someone a uh, fleece. There you go. They like. <laughs> do you want to do a pitch for the kinds of things the conservation committee does? Um, uh, I mean, people at home watching might not actually know. Oh, uh, so. yeah. I'm not prepared. The conservation okay. committee. Uh, our job commission. is commission. Sorry, is to help people navigate the uh, Department of Environmental Protection rules uh, pertaining to water, standing and flowing water uh, in our town. So 
uh, what we do is people apply for building permits and we check to make sure that no resources will be affected. And if they might be affected, we have hearings to determine how best to um, minimize any damage that would occur uh, to said resources. Um, so the cool part is, is we get to meet lots of people. Uh, we go all over town. We see all kinds of neat places um, that I never would have seen. I've been to all kinds of really interesting places and seen some neat stuff and help people get their projects done. Um, and so by navigate, you mean help people to apply for waivers? Help um, people, the paperwork can be complicated and the rules, you know, there's a big fat book um, yeah. and it's hard to understand. Um, but the, the principles are pretty simple and um, the goal is to get projects done uh, and to figure out how to get them done. Um, and we're just lucky here because we don't live on the coast, so there's a whole half of the book that we don't have to know about. Mm. Um, plus we get to take lots of walks and out in the woods and see cool stuff. Uh, I'm all for that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, tell your friends. Um, I guess that's all I got. Thank you. So thank you guys. Thank um, you. And hopefully uh, you and Bob and I will stay strong and we can get some more people in um, and build it up. So then you can stay or leave by choice. You'll have a long lift from all the people watching. I swag. So. That's what that was the word I was looking for. They want, people want <laughs> swag Bob, that's, with that's their Bob. volunteer yeah, service. That's true. We got three Bs. Um, so that's my pitch. Thank you. I'm sorry. No. Thank you. Oh, um, no, thank you for. But I think it's rolling okay. Like I said, I just got to get through over this hump, and um, the financial part is a bit tricky, but we'll get there. Just have to okay. Put some time. The financial so, part? Well, like, we expect money too, so that's a whole. There's an accounting aspect to this committee because we receive fees. Um, it has to transfer money, and then we have to deal with the paper for uh, for legal ads and stuff. So we get money and pay money. And, uh huh. Um, so that's a whole part of it too. Uh, and usually we spread those duties out amongst several people, but not all. Okay. Come home to roost, all those chickens. Cluck, all right. cluck. Cluck, cluck. Thank you. Yeah, so. Thank you for doing it. Yeah, not a problem, happy to. Um, so I look forward to seeing you a week from Tuesday. A week from Tuesday, week from tomorrow. Uh, we're gonna get right into the UCC thing, which will be interesting, and yeah. um, see if I can scare you away. Sad. So I reckon that we should take a vote as a committee, when we still have three people to add, Kind of do this a little uh, backwards, but we need to, as a commission, you guys approved Bob, right, to be on the commission? Yes. I guess that's all this really needed. Yeah, yeah I think we so. We don't have to have yeah. an internal discussion. We'll, 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 feel like well, usually we recommend people, and then I guess you guys approve. You recommend them to us, right. Okay, and then right. you approve. All right, cool. I'll, I'll make up a form, and... Uh, I can't wait. Yeah. You but get you sworn in and all that oh, stuff. Oh, see Jenny. You have to see Jenny mm -hmm. and take the ethics test, and I'm sure you've taken all these things. I've taken, do I have to take it again? Oh, we have to no, take it like sure. I feel I've like I have to take it every I'm, 45 minutes. Not if you're current. I'm already vaccinated. Yeah. All right, I yeah. am too, but yeah. I think I'm due for a shot. Uh huh. All right, cool. All right, thanks, guys. All Thank right. you very much. Thank yeah. you. what I expected so, so for all I yeah. knew you were gonna say I've really been looking forward to being on this committee but 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 uh, you, you know you know the school committee is huge so okay <coughs> yeah. Happy to go see this so Franklin County Technical School uh, another negotiation already dealt with that I mean no no and okay. they are having their selection meeting a week from Tuesday oddly enough which is your presentation? Yes. And you could be meeting with the I will be meeting with the conservation committee commission. commission. You won't be able to the, vote on anything. So, so you don't have to meet with them on this. The select well, board. The, I saw that in this. The idea. select the select board can nominate anybody to go in its stead. Yes. A so, designee. So we ha we have a town representative to the tech already, right? Uh, Brian Kuzmeskis is on the school committee. The uh, or he had been on the school. I think he's still our representative of the school committee. Right. So, and so he would have to go to that. This on the twenty third, and we could nominate him to uh, represent. You might not want to nominate him if <coughs> he didn't want to go. That would be oh. a little sticky. The, 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 what I saw is that there's nineteen member towns, and they wanted the nineteen <coughs> member town selectmen. 
19 town yeah. selectmen to come and nominate the one among them yes. who will represent all 19 towns, and, well, which you, is just sort you of... Saw the, you saw the CMR, you know? That's a district. Right. That's right. a district. That's like sort of... Yeah. Democracy in name only. So it, so it sounded like either John could go, you know, I mean, John yeah. is the chair. Or he can... He, or he could find somebody to represent... It, yeah, it's conceivable that, that he could do it on his own authority because it is the chair who is spe specifically named right. or the right. chair's designee. Right. So I would say that this doesn't need action right now. Uh, I was thinking, unless one of you were actually able and willing to go... Um, on the 23rd, yeah. it's tough. Yeah, because both of you uh, are already committed. Right. Yeah. And their problem as a district isn't the contracts that they have, it's the bloated administration that they have. So that's their problem. That's all of our problem. That's why they, 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 have, they have more administrators. The technical school. Though. Yes, they have more administrators than Frontier and Union 38 combined uh -huh. with far fewer students. And that makes their health care expensive? Um, that makes their that makes their budget their, higher right. when they have superintendent, assistant superintendent, principal, assistant principal, and they're a seven through twelve business manager, assistant business man. They have layers of assistants that, hmm. which are all six figure positions, which no other school district in our county has, and they have fewer students than almost all of us. What are you gonna do? Um, so we're going to assume John is going to go to that, or, or he'll, he'll somebody. name somebody. He might he might want to give Brian a call. I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, tabled, I'll say. Okay. Uh, refer to John. Yeah. An update. Yes, I have an update. It's a lot of uh, update here. Uh, okay. For committees, the Highway Garage Committee met for the first time on Tuesday and set its meeting dates for the year until the annual town meeting, November 6th, December 4th, January 15th, February 12th, March 12th, the time of 6 p.m. The November 6th, and these are all up on the website. The November 6th meeting will start with a site visit to the garage at 6 p.m., followed by a meeting at 6.30 in the general purpose room to discuss the history of the project the previous plans and begin reassessing the project from the beginning, starting with defining the need and the functionality of a facility designed to last for several decades. I wish it was designed to last for several centuries, hmm. but nobody's working in stone anymore. Uh, John Heffernan is resigning from the Conway Recreation and Trails Committee as chair and member effective immediately. He was that committee. Uh, he has a new primary job that is much more demanding uh, than his previous position. On top of parenting, his, <laughs> I cut and pasted this from his email, second job is an adjunct professor at Tufts and his coaching and organization work with Cal Ripken and Babe Ruth Baseball. He can't give the Recreation Committee the attention it needs and deserves. Um, so what does that do to that committee? Uh, well, they're going to have to work with it at their next meeting. Uh, for department news, tax bills are slated to go out this week. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, maybe before the meeting, uh, we're expecting uh, the state approval to come in perhaps as early as tomorrow. Uh, so then it takes a couple days to get the bills printed and the envelopes stuffed, uh, but they should go, certainly go out this week. The assessor spent a good, uh, great deal of time with the Department of Revenue reviewing new information, which together with a late start on property visits contributed to missing the original target date of October 1st for the mailing. The good news is that there is substantial new growth, primarily in personal property, and the tax rate is slated, not approved yet, but slated to go up only about 15 cents to $18.65 per thousand, the lowest increase in several years. I'm not aware of the effect of the revaluation on property values, but we are slated to have an excess levy capacity of about $160,000. Uh, 
while I may propose in my fiscal year 2020 budget both a grant match fund and a study for a town hall lift, we should maintain fiscal discipline going forward, reserving some excess levy capacity for unforeseen emergencies. Based on an email from our police and fired injured on duty insurer recommending maximum coverage for police and fire injured on duty claims. Wait, our insurance salesperson recommended more insurance? Shocking. I requested and received a quote for the maximum coverage. We are now paying 11 We don't have maximum coverage now, is that a change? We are now paying $11,890 per year. Maximum coverage would cost $30,000. $676. Prior to my coming to Conway, we had been paying about $15,000 and I moved us to the Maya program as a money saver. While we value our public safety officials greatly, we do not have full-time staff and our risk is lower than many municipalities. So I will continue to recommend the less costly package. The treasurer reports that the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust has realized savings of about a million dollars on pharmaceutical expenses based on implementing various discounts, which is likely to grow over the next two years. In addition, claims have leveled off, so the trust is not losing as much money as it was last year when it proposed plan changes. Based on this, Jan does not recommend a plan change at this time. We're unsure whether or not the Group Insurance Trust will uh, feel the same way she does, but she is prepared not to go forward with the plan change at this time based on this information. Uh, the Highway Department participated in the annual MMA survey on, that's Mass Municipal Association survey on road and bridge needs as part of their advocacy campaign for Chapter 90 funding. We estimate we get about one quarter of our needs met with $264,963 out of 1.1 million needed to keep all our roads and bridges in good repair. Where do you come up with those numbers? I'm sorry? Where do we come up with 1.1 million as our number for every year? Well, we came up with, with that for this year. Uh, we've been doing this every year for a long time. Uh, I sent out a request for information on conservation agents to surrounding towns as requested at an earlier select board meeting. None had one, but Deerfield and Williamsburg expressed possible interest in a shared position. We are sending out a notice for CONCOM membership, uh, but really need long-term expertise. Now, conservation agents will generally do the technical work that our Conservation Commission has done uh, as you heard Bruton going, you know, so you, walking you, around in the we woods would have and to stuff hire like them. that. Yeah, uh, and towns. many towns do, and they would take care of all the technical details and make sure everything was on track. We have been able to do that all ourselves. Uh, a good portion of that was due to uh, the fine work that uh, Mr. Gates did yeah. as chair of the committee. So this remains something to keep, you know, in the back of our minds as we go forward, uh, whether or not. Uh, the committee is, uh, the commission is still um, uh, well enough functioning to be able to do the technical work on their own. So, and none of the towns around us use an agent today. Right. Uh, again, Deerfield and Williamsburg expressed possible interest in a shared position. Mm -hmm. uh, in other news, the town hall will again be used by volunteers for a Halloween party. See Helen Baker for more info. Great. Yes, I'm very good friends with the judges of the costume uh, the thing this year. Uh, I recommend the judges highly. I trust in their discretion. Is it you? No, my, no. Wife, my wife. Oh, well, there you go. And her friends. <laughs> so. And the rag shag braid. Uh, yes, yes. I think we... Wonderful. So, yes, yes, that's, yes. That's all I have. Thank you, Tom. Uh, any comments from select board members? Um, uh, not particularly, I suppose. None that you haven't already expressed. Uh, that's no, okay. that's not true. I mean, the the, the about the just, you know lots of people were talking about the town meeting, and I think it would have been good to um, I th uh, to, to to talk a little bit just about. Uh, 
things that we said that didn't, you know, that the garage vote in particular. The garage vote. I, I thought what I got feedback that the problem for them for for somebody that they they got turned off on the garage vote on the pilot discussion, um, and that that uh, somebody that that when that when you stood up and said that um, we want we want the pilot we we want the assessor's office to be you know we we want the select board wants the authority because the select the assessor's office has expertise on this. And you said, Lee, do you have anything to add to that? And Lee stood up and said, oh, I don't have any expertise on this at all. I just didn't want to have to assess it. And I like the idea of getting pilot. We don't, now I don't have to assess it. And um, I don't and, think that was what she said. Well, that was kind of, but that's like the gist of what, uh, what I thought she said too. And that, like just that little interaction um, took like a, a what you what you meant was that they have an attorney um, and and that the attorney's knowledgeable and all that. But I'm but, not sure he's but, an attorney. Oh uh, well, they have somebody that's but the format didn't really encourage that kind of thing, and that that was like a low hanging meatball, a sort of a question as to your credibility that really wasn't real a real question and it could have been dealt. But for this one person, they were like, I couldn't trust you on that. I can't trust you on anything. And, you know, just okay, get, so get your story get your story straight. That's, a, and, that's and, a person who didn't necessarily hear everything that was said. Because I made it very clear that the select board would be depending on the assessor's consultant. Um, so, yeah. and, and if, if Lee didn't follow up with that, um, I'm sorry, you know. But it sounds like what you'd like is you'd like a follow-up meeting, like the pre-town meeting. We need a post-town meeting. No, to I think I think I think it's actually good f to rehearse these, to, to have like a walk-through night, an all-committee walk-through night where you address an empty room, and especially for the important stuff, and and sound like you got like s sound like it's all clicking in the same hmm. gear that that. Part of it from doing this in different departments, different compartments, everything's compartmentalized, et cetera. And I think that, I think our, our assessor would have benefited from, from it as well. And I think uh, it would result in more professional, uh, 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 whatever, the presentations. Hmm. And then I think that there's well, a lot Well, usually we do have a pre-town meeting before town meeting. Yeah. And that kind of people get yeah, up, like, and for many people, yeah. it's an opportunity to practice their spiel before they have to stand up in town meeting and do it. And, and, and the importance of when somebody stands up and promises something to town meeting, like, you, you have to follow through on that. That that's really bad, too, when you promise something at the last town meeting, oh, I'll get this up on our website and at whatever, and then... The same guy says, "You promised me this, and you never did it." And that doesn't look too good either. So, um, and uh, maybe creating some sort of mechanism to keep track of who makes promises to do something, hmm. and then make sure that they get a reminder uh, to actually do that thing that they promised to do. So, we're all working hard. I know we are. Yeah, but I think I, I'm a big believer in practice and preparation like that. Speaking mm. in front of a mirror is good. End of my comments. Of the comments, okay. So we have some mail. I'm not going to read the mail word for word, but I can, I will summarize it anyway. So one of these is the Franklin County Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority um, is inviting us to a dedication of their Kulik meeting room and that will be on uh, uh, November 2nd uh, 4 to 6 p.m. at their facility at, at their office in Turner's Falls so one more meeting you can go to if you're dying to <laughs> so uh, but it's, Steve Kulik is getting a lot of honors in various forms as he is stepping down so that's nice um, these these were two letters that were sent to you, or did you? So one of these was the letter from John Heffernan. So we yeah. can, we uh, so 
Well, John Hefferson announced, as we talked about in the meeting, that he's being forced to step down from the uh, Recreation and Trails Committee. Uh, his personal life is getting very busy, and and he, he's also a perfect example of what I've watched happen while I've been here in Conway. Is people who have kids join these committees and and you know help coach their teams, and then their kids grow up and they continue to do it for a while but as their kid gets older and they start doing other sports it gets harder and harder for them to continue to put in all of that time for other people's kids uh, and they you know want those parents to step up and and coach those teams for the little kids and you know it just it is an issue that seems to happen over and over again so we, you know when when I when when you see something in these letters though, and when you see like an expression of dissatisfaction, um, like uh, the that, I feel really bad about that because I know how much he gave, yeah, um, in time and effort and my everything, um, and and I I remember when sort of that the, their issue came up with the baseball mound, the softball team, that whatever whatever the. That, that that was earlier this summer, and when and that when you see that there was when you're getting reports of conflict, um, you know, if it were up to me, I would ask whoever's got a conflict to come in and have a conversation on the record in front mm -hmm. of the select board and try to resolve things and try to make progress. Because I think by just leaving people to their own devices, people go bye bye. And he didn't, you know, he didn't bring that up here, but he did bring it up in our meeting. But, yeah. Um, you know, he also sounded like the bureaucracy is just getting gigantic for, for dealing with these teams. And well, it's been a long process to bring Conway Youth Sports into the Town Parks and Rec Committee. I and know. there's a lot of boxes that have to be checked when the town assumes responsibility for a program like this. Yeah. And it's been several years, and it's going to be another year before the process is really wrapped up. So it's a work in progress. Yeah. So. So I hope they can find someone that will step up because it's a huge, a huge job. Just doing the lines in the field is crazy. And I did that once. I said, you got to find somebody else. <laughs> I messed it up. I tried my best and I messed yeah, it up. It's like, it didn't work. I mean, it's... We were all trying our best. Yeah. Uh, I'm less familiar with this one from Bernard Lynch. Could you talk to that? or do you... Oh, that's just an announcement of a program for people who want to uh, get involved with municipal operations. So, so th this was it's for a, town it's employees? An, it's an education it's program. It, 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 it could be. It could it, be for people coming in from the private sector. There's a series of, uh, a, a short course that's being offered. Suffolk uh, University course. Yeah. And uh, there, are, there are a variety of uh, organizations that are trying to do more work getting people into municipal work because it's, it's different from private sector work, often less remunerative and um, there's not a lot of publicity out there for it, so. So it sounded like he was looking for feedback from the town. Was that, would that be how many people might be interested or, or he was looking for, you Yeah, know, that, 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 that's a specific thing. I, I, it, it came in and I thought it would be useful more just to promote yeah, yeah. the fact that this is happening, so. Uh, when, doesn't doesn't uh, DOR doesn't DOR do, do the same thing? Don't they have the baby finance college and all that stuff? And they had a um, one that was uh, six weeks long or something like that, and they have stopped doing that. Uh, and there's definitely room for that. That could take up. So I, w I was hoping you could just mention something about the program. So I, I, I can read the first paragraph. It'll it's, it's what well, he's proposing. So he says, as some of you may know, Suffolk and the MMA are working on a program to help address the problem of filling those hard to fill municipal finance positions. The focus will be on preparing current municipal employees that aren't in top positions now and the newly hired individuals that are moving into the municipal sector from the private sector. 
The goal will be to provide both types of individuals with an overview of municipal finance in order to supply information and knowledge and instill greater confidence. We're envisioning it to be a four and a half day program over five weeks, most likely on Fridays with modules, with module topics to include overview of Massachusetts municipal government, budgeting process and review of revenue sources, accounting and financial reporting, treasury functions, property assessment, human resources and costing of personnel, and conclusion, including presentation of best practices. And so he's thinking this program is going to cost less than $1,000, and I assume the town would pay if somebody's interested in doing it, or would they have to pay? You know? uh, well, it depends on the town and the individual and, and what they wanted to get out yeah. of it. So he's looking for feedback on yeah, and I've, I've, that idea. Yeah, and I've communicated with him, but... Good. Um, and yeah, th so this is one of uh, a number of, of things that are going on, and uh, it's that we really do need people. We need a deeper bench for municipal staff. So this would be people that are interested in the finance committee, interested in assistant tax collector kind or, of stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, or again, people coming in from the private sector. Um, interested in municipal work. Okay. So we have another letter. This one's a bit longer. I hesitate to summarize it because it's, you know, it, it's, it's a letter written by the Historical Commission to the church. Um, and it has to do with the Municipal Association's role of overseeing the church and now they recognize that their role has ended. So it says, we no longer have any formal role in overseeing the preservation of the exterior of the United Association, United Congregational Church under the terms of the 2012 joint agreement signed by the UCC and the town. Selectmen, nor any control over your private property as part of your general jurisdiction. As you know, part of that 2012 joint agreement transformed the $100,000 Community Preservation Act grant to the church into an interest-free loan of sorts. A repayment arrangement that with other provisions of the agreement did not align with the Community Preservation Act itself. In hindsight, everyone's good intentions were hindered by the complicated language of the many terms of that agreement document. And it was complicated. As the town committee charged with helping to protect Conway's historic resources, however, we remain very concerned about news reports of your plans to demolish the historic 1885 UCC church, rather than, for example, trying to rebuild from within while attempting to preserve as much as possible of the exterior facade of the church, including its magnificent stone basement foundation walls. We do realize that the bell tower steeple may need to come down in any event. We understand that your long-delayed insurance settlement may not provide the necessary resources to permit the UCC to repair or renovate the church in that way. But if that's the case, we urge you to appeal to the wider community for financial assistance, as has been done before by the church, to repair and preserve the church, including during Reverend Moore's tenure to attempt to fill whatever gap exists between the projected costs of such preservation work and your current resources and future needs. So that's the general gist of what they hope to accomplish. Or you know, I, I will say that that last I find that last paragraph regrettable. Uh, but uh, the rest of the letter uh, is I, fine. It, yeah, it, yeah. So so the church is is moving on and has you know I think has made their decision of what they need to do. Yeah. Um, and but but the historical commission is. It will be sad to see a beautiful building go. So that they go on to suggest that they, mm -hmm. that uh, before they take that final step, they ought to look for uh, support within the community. So they're hoping that maybe there might there might be some money available, and I think the churches doesn't think that's the case. But they've tried. Yeah. So and I, I also note though that one of the signatories recused in that letter is Bill Burnett, and they're such a you know that they're so they are that in my I've always thought like they are the church and mm -hmm. for him to put it, at least his name to this letter lets me know that it's not 
viewed with offense. So I feel better about it. Yeah. That's good. So we have another love letter uh, the, from the Massachusetts Office of Disability. Do you know what this is about? I do. Uh, uh, yes, I, there. I, oh, what are, I, I underlined the things. Um, oh yeah, they um, were once again requesting that we set up a commission on disability, which is a town meeting vote for a commission of no fewer than five people, no fewer of three of which should be uh, should have a disability. And we did set up a committee um, at. Uh, uh, within the last year, I think. Yeah. And uh, that it's not the commission as established, which is um, fairly rigorously defined and mandated. Uh, but we do have a group uh, who, who could advise on projects going forward, such as uh, if, if we ever get a proposal, as I mentioned earlier, a, a lift in town hall, uh, that sort of thing. Um, I did keep them uh, informed as the uh, current grant was being implemented at, at Town Hall. Uh, so I just wanted um, you all to know that there is this process and, um, you know, it takes a, a town meeting vote and, and uh, all that sort of thing. Um, and that we have addressed this partly by having a committee. There are, there are other, this is, other, other. This, this is the one size fits all recommendations for every town? Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot about parking fines and so, a lot about parking. Um, Any kind of parking? Yeah. So, and so uh, can we just say thanks for the unfunded mandate? Remit the sum of X, and we'll we'll be happy to comply. Well, and and, and yeah, it's it, it's not a mandate; it is a local acceptance. So um, anyway, okay. they send it. I'm sharing it along with my observations. So at some point, we would have to decide whether we want to form that commission. It, you know, which is more formal than the committee that we have now. It, it can be done. You can put it on any warrant you uh -huh. want. But I I'm just pointing out that we do have a committee that yeah. functions as a, at least as as my advisory committee right. when you know right. when I was right. overseeing that, that town hall right. project and, and that sort of thing. And and, and that seems it, they it's seem just good. for your information at this point. The committee's working I mean, somebody from your viewpoint. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's an informal right. Right. It, it's it's pretty informal by now. You know, I ask Rusty and Tom, you know, yeah. What do you think? And um, I had I had tried to get um, Henry Mulvey on the committee, and he said, uh, "I can't really do it now. Maybe later." I said, "That's good. I'll keep your I'll keep your email." So nothing's. Lori, we, we Lori don't have Block. Any, we don't have any projects. Okay, that's good. You know about her work with disability.org and the filmmaking that she's done. Oh, I thought you were suggesting her as a member. Yeah, I mean she's maybe. maybe. But, Okay, yeah, Name, names are good, emails are good. Okay, we have another letter. Uh, so this is something that people at home want to know about free legal advice. Uh, dial a lawyer. It's a, a service offered by the Mass Bar Association. So if you're interested, their number is 413. Oh, there's a particular se day that you can uh, 782-1659. It says, yes, you can call in on Tuesday, October 30th, 4 to 7 p.m. Only. So, only. And I'm sorry, I stepped on your no, no, your, your, fine. your phone number. So Maybe. the phone number is 413-782-1659. So dial a lawyer. You can get free legal advice between 4 and 7 on Tuesday, October 30th. So that's two weeks from tomorrow. Mm. Right before the election. Week before the election. Uh, we have another letter, a lot of mail. Um, so Moonlight Magic is coming back to Shelburne Falls. It's going to be Friday, October 23rd. November. Uh, uh, November, say November 23rd, that's the day after Thanksgiving. And uh, if anyone's ever been there, they know it's a lot of fun. Um, 
So we have an invitation from the Hampshire Select Board Association. So, you know, the Select Board Associations have dinners and uh, they often invite other county select boards to, to join them, to come as visitors. So we're invited to come and join them on October 19th at uh, 5.30. So. You going? I don't know. I have gone, and it, you know, it's always interesting to see when they, when who comes from other counties, see who you know. But it's and it's good to hear, you know, what the issues are in the other counties. And one one more letter. So this is a letter. Um, people may have read in the recorder that Shelburne Falls has just received a um, prestigious award of being one of two places in Massachusetts that people are encouraged to come visit. And this is a, um, an event in Shelburne Falls to celebrate that award they got. And so the event is going to be October 18th, 5.30 to 7.30. It's, it's going to be in the Shelburne Falls Community Center. That's which this, is this Thursday. That's this October 18th, this Thursday, right. Uh, the community center is right down near the Shelburne Falls Post Office. People know where that is. It's that large metal roofed building. Right, right. It looks like a church uh, right next to the post it's office. Also the post office for a fair number of Conway residents. Oh, yeah. Well, I go there. So, so they're inviting everyone to come and uh, there's going to be music and stuff going on and uh, a party at Shelburne Falls. That's Ooh. the mail. Any other announcements? Motion to adjourn. I've got nothing. Second. Aye.